Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Preston, and I got my co-host, Ryan, in the building. Hey, what's going on, folks? And today, we got a very, very special guest, my man, Jose Rodriguez. Hey, how's it going, everybody? How's everybody doing out there? Hey, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I haven't seen this man in like seven, eight years. Still looking young, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All that PT. Uh, hey, I appreciate it, man. <laughs> hey, yeah, and you coming live from uh, Korea. Oh, I'm going to say sir. South Korea. I don't want to say uh, just Korea. Get people, right. Start having people clearance. It's like, oh, so you're in Korea, huh? <laughs> <laughs> get, me, get me caught up out here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I just want to say, uh, first of all, start off and say thank you for coming on the show. And, um, you know, like I said, we've just been doing this since May. So, you know, this is uh, season one. And we're actually wrapping up on this. This is like one of the last episodes of uh, season one. And we'll be coming out with season two on uh, January, February time frame. But, uh, okay. so yeah, so how's life treating you over there before we start, you know, hitting um, the topics? Yeah, it's, it's been good. I can't complain about it. You know, I'm here, wife, kids here with me. So, the, you know, about that being young, that's what happens when you have daughters, you know. They keep <laughs> you young because I got to compete with them young books that they looking at. You know what I mean? I got like, hey, 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 I don't, I, you know. You know how it is, man. You got girls. <laughs> yeah, I got four girls. Like, I was, um, my daughter went to homecoming last year. Right. And I'm talking about, I'm sitting there like, because she came downstairs. It was like a movie. She came downstairs. I swear to God, <laughs> it's like emotion. I'm sitting there like, okay. Then I look at her feet. She got heels on. I was like, who the hell bought you heels? I'm sitting there like, hey, hey, hey. Oh, where the flats at? You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> He's like, Dad, um, you know, mommy bought. I'm looking at her like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. This is on both of y'all. Yeah. Hey, you so, both about yeah, to get jabbed up for this. Yeah. I was like, what's going on here? But, uh, yeah, she had a good time. And it's kind of scary, though, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like my daughter is in 10th grade. And I'd be sitting there like, damn, you about to be out the house in a couple minutes. You know, I hope I did a good job, you know, raising you. Fall yeah. back on your, tra- you know, your training or whatever. And, uh, you know, survive or whatever, so. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's all we want to do in life, man, no matter what. And, and whether they leave the house at 18 or uh, even 28, you know, like I tell my, my daughters all the time, it ain't never no rush for you to leave my house, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just want to make sure that when you do leave, you are prepared to leave, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, and, yeah. I, you know, I, I try right now and instill that mindset of my college, you know, and, and, you know, my girls got good groups of friends that they hang out with that, you know, all they talk about are the colleges they're going to. So I hear that coming out of my daughter's mouth now, you know, and, okay. and as a, as a parent who, you know, who didn't do so good in school and didn't have the same opportunities to go to college, you know, my, my dad wasn't in the, in the military, you know, he, uh, he packed it up and left when I was a kid, you know, but I grew up single mom, raising five kids, you know, those opportunities weren't there, you know, so to see my daughters have those opportunities and to want to take advantage of them, I'm like, hey, that's, you know, that's good for me. That, you know, that lets me know as a father and my wife, Karen, as a mother, that we're doing good to prepare them, you know, to to go out and leave our house one day and just do good things in the world, you know, yeah. and that's all what it boils down to, you know, people just leaving, growing up, going out into the world and just being good people, man. You know, being good people, having good values, good morals, and, you know, just keep passing that on to the next generations, you know. Yeah, yeah, that, that's it, man. My, uh, my daughter, she, she turns 18 uh, the, uh, soon, and she'll be, uh, she'll be out the house. Oh, not out the house. She'll be in college uh, right. know, this, this May, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I'm trying to, just like you hit around the head, I'm trying to be that same way. Like, hey, I just hope you remember what your parents taught you. You know, you, the doors always will open for you to come back home if you're strapped, right. whatever the case is. Right. Yeah. yeah, definitely, you know. And, and, and like I said, you know, that's just that, that just lets us know as parents, we're do, doing good in life when we, we can afford that opportunity. You know, hey, if stuff gets too hard for you out there, baby girl, you know, you can always pack it up and come back home, stop, reset, and we go back out and drop. Oh, yeah, because I'm not letting my kids fail. I mean, I fail, but I'm not letting them hit the ground so hard like, Right. Well, they think it's impossible. Yeah, like, I don't want you to be like, oh, like, you could, a mistake can happen in anybody's life. You know, you can get fired, right. you can get, you know, whatever the case may be. And, you know, I want to be there just like, you know, like how my dad was there for me. You know, when I, when I left right. Germany, I was able to move back to my dad's house, <laughs> reset for a couple of months, and bam, got a job, and I'm good. Um, 
and I want to be that for you know my kids, whatever. I mean, you know, I got like thirty of them, but you know, what I'm saying I'm like, oh, oh, you're not going to get a job though. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying like, <laughs> so you got to pitch in, you got yeah, to help I out. In, no, no, I, I need you up at eight. Now I can, you can't. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that's good stuff. So my um, so my oldest, she's in um, what is it called? Navy JRTC, and okay. it's so funny, man. I just be sitting there like, because you no, know, this is COVID. Everything's like online or whatever. So when she gets uh dressed, um, and then she has to you know do all the stuff um on, on the computer or whatever, it's just so funny. And I be hearing the guy be like, man, that guy sound like trash. I be like, and I be like, I keep thinking like, oh, that's Navy. Okay, that's that's why they sound like that. And, uh, <laughs> I don't like Navy, so, but I mean, I will if she joins the Navy or something, maybe, maybe whatever, but it's just so <laughs> funny, man, like, my daughter, um, it was a couple weeks ago, she had a big bun, and I knew that thing was out of regs, I was like, oh, that thing all the way out of regs, <laughs> so the dude, I could hear him saying, he was like, hey, um, hey, cadet, or whatever, what they call, he was like, is that bun in regulation, and in my mind, I'm like, I was like, that thing is all the way gone. <laughs> she was like, but well, she said it's so, pro she's like, yeah, yes, it's in regulation. I was like, well, if you're going to be wrong, be all the way wrong. Hey, with yeah. it. hey be like, confident. Yeah. Be confident. Like, Are you sure? And she was like, I mean, she didn't say, hell yeah, but I, I know in, the, in my mind, she's like, hell yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was so funny. Then he was just like, he was just like, I'm gonna need you to look up, uh, you know, whatever the regulation is in the Navy. I was like, and then so she got done, I told her, I was like, nah, girl, that thing, I don't know the measurements by heart anymore, but yeah, that thing, I could eyeball that. And I'm like, that thing yeah, is wrong. Eyeball it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but it was, it was cool. It's, it's cool to see, uh, you know, them doing stuff like that and, uh, you know, and progressing. But, okay, so let's talk. You from Florida, right? Yes, yep. oh, born I and raised. Florida, but well, which part? Uh, Miami, Florida. I, oh. I, I don't know if you noticed my backdrop over here. Yeah, I see. I and, uh, see. This dude over here living the yeah. lifestyle, Richard and, Payne. And, and, and. There we go. Oh, right okay. there. Look at that. Oh, Wade Trap. County. Wade County. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wade County, oh, baby. Wade County. Oh, yeah. Got it. Track it. Yeah, it ain't day. We renamed that years ago, man. Yeah, Wade. Wade County. Oh, man. Hey, I mean, he, he gave y'all, well, I ain't going to say he gave y'all. He gave y'all one ring. Not, he, he, no, he, gave, he, he gave. He gave. He gave y'all one ring. And the rest of the song, Brian. Okay, but you said it right. He gave us <laughs> one ring, and then he gave us the others because he pulled Chris Bosh and LeBron James down. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna accept that because you know, what I'm saying at least you are born and raised in Miami, so you're not a bandwagon fan. So right, right, I can, right. I can respect that when you was rooting for LeBron, but you shouldn't be rooting for LeBron at this point, though. Oh no, oh no. But oh, okay, good. Some Jim, people be Jimmy like, Butler, Tyler Hero, we on deck. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, I'm like, how does that work? How you gonna follow this man to the Lakers? And I'm like, what so, do that? So at? you know, I, I noticed that man. You got people who are team fans, and then you got people who are player fans. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. and and it, it you always tend to see, I think, more player base fans when there is a person pushing greatness like Le LeBron James mm -hmm. or like a Michael Jordan, you know, that that's when you start to see more player type fans, you know, but yeah. I know tons of people who are like, Hey, I'm a Jordan fan, not a Bulls fan. So when he, he jumped to another team, I'm a Jordan fan, you know? <laughs> and, and now, you know, I see a lot of people who are like, Hey, you know, I'm a LeBron fan. My old boss, Mr. Oliver was that way, man. Oh, uh, he's okay. a LeBron fan through and through, you know, I saw him with his Cleveland Jersey, then he swapped out one day. He came to the office wearing a Miami Heat jersey. I'm like, wait a minute. Weren't you Cleveland last week? And he's like, no, no, no. You know, I'm a LeBron fan, man. And now he out there rocking a, a Lakers jersey. I'm like, oh, man. Yeah, like, no, I can't do that. And I'm talking about, I'm such, a, uh, I don't want to say a hater. That's a strong word. But I don't rock with LeBron at all. I'm talking about at all. I don't, I don't own no LeBron shoes. I don't own no uh, merchandise, <laughs> like you know what I'm saying, like none. And uh, I always get in arguments with people, you know, about you know LeBron and stuff like that. So, like especially like with Reed, you know, he's a LeBron mm -hmm. fan, and I'd be like, bro, he trash. I ain't say he trash, but I'd be like, right. When you have two and three top five players in the league on your team, I just do expect greatness, like from that team. Right, like, you know what I'm saying? It's but, like, but can't, can't the same be said for Jordan? Though? No, 
Pippen, well, no, Vernon. I, you don't, you don't think first. he had a couple of top five players on his team? Yeah, Pippen was. Pippen so, was so, so here's the thing, Pippen right? Was drafted though. Pippen was drafted. Okay. Like Pippen was drafted and Horace Grant was drafted. So that okay. first three P, he didn't have. I mean, nobody knew Pippen. He came from Central Arkansas. Ain't nobody was like, yo, he gonna be the next. No, <laughs> Central Arkansas. Okay. I mean, he was, you know, he was nice in college or whatever at Central Arkansas. He went at Duke or, you know, a powerhouse school, whatever. And then they just happened to click and mesh. And then it happened to get Phil Jackson. And yeah. Phil Jackson was a radical yeah. nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, right. So it wasn't like, oh, shit, like he got, they say, hey, man, let me get the greatest coach over here. Okay, let me get the greatest player. No, that first three beat, that was on the strength of them meshing. Yeah. Homegrown, yeah. homegrown home talent. Grown. Yeah, homegrown. That's homegrown talent. So you gotta respect right. that. <laughs> so that so that they they the late uh Golden State Wars is what you're telling me. Yeah. Now yeah. Golden State, that first ring, that even was homegrown. Even that was hurt, you know, they, that's they all were, homegrown. That was still homegrown. That was homegrown. So you gotta respect that. You know what I'm saying? Right. But people be like, oh, that's a super team. How the hell is it a super team? Yeah, they they, they know how yeah, they didn't know how Clay Town was gonna pan out or stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like they was drafted. Right. Now obviously when they got KD. <laughs> Yeah, that was just, you know. <laughs> that was too. Uh, <laughs> y'all cheating. Y'all, yeah, that y'all put cheap. that cheat code in. That was, <laughs> <laughs> that was cheap. Put the cheat code in, right? Yeah. It was like up, down, <laughs> right, right, A, B, A, B. <laughs> yeah, that was a cheat code, whatever. But, um, but you know, and that's, just, and that's just what it is with, like, let's like say, with LeBron. When LeBron right. didn't have an AD, like that first year, what happened? They got destroyed. He did get hurt. But I don't think he was hurt, like, the way he just missed the rest of the damn season. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm okay. saying? But then as soon as he got AD, then we got Rondo. Bro, Rondo's a Hall of Famer. So you had yeah. – you literally got all these people coming, coming to your through. team. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I think that's so the you, difference. You, you look at the NBA landscape, though, and that's all part of who, – who started this, right? You The, the people know. that started this was oh. Boston. The Celtics started this, mm-hmm. you know, when, when they when they got their big three, you started forcing other teams to try and get talent to beat got, them. Yeah, you got to compete. But, you know what I'm saying? Right, because you, you got to compete. So the Miami did it next, and everybody started hating on Miami. And I'm like, but Miami only did it because they couldn't get past Boston because Boston did it first, you know. Yeah, so you got to find a way to compete. Did, mm-hmm. I respect Boston's big three because they rocked out mm-hmm. on their team they was already kind of almost out of their prime. It's not like okay. they came in at 25, they got fresh legs. Like, no, they was like, everybody was in their 30s. You know, he's probably about 30 or 31. And the only one that was young was Rondo. Right. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like they came to, like, dude, think about it. Um, Ray Allen, you know, my man Jesus. Yeah. He, he, he rocked Shuttlesworth. out. Mm-hmm. Oh, Shuttlesworth. He rocked out <laughs> with the Bucks for a while. And then right. he went to uh, what, uh, Seattle. Yeah. So he was already <laughs> like, okay, whatever. And then he got to Boston, you know, he was already like towards the end of his career. Because it wasn't like, oh, he had a good, strong 15 more years left in him. Hell no. Right. He did the big three for, what, a couple of years? And then yeah. he went to Miami and, you know, he won the game for y'all. But, you know what I'm yes, saying? He did. He really did. Like, he's saving lives out there. <laughs> <Hey>. um, <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you. <laughs> and it's just like um, Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett, he rocked out with the Timberwolves forever. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? And that's what I'm saying. Like, they rocked out on that one team forever. Now, when I look at Miami, when they did the big three, they're well in their damn pro- – like, they're like, hey, I'm 27. I'm 20. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because Bron – he was in the 20s. Yeah, he did what? Yeah, they were in their 20s. Yeah, they yeah, all were in their 20s. He left in like 25, 26. D Wade still young. Because, yeah, shit, D Wade, they're about, about the same age. And then, mm-hmm. uh, same thing with uh, Chris Bob. D Wade is a little older. Yeah, he's like three years yeah, old. Like three he, did, years. he did his four years at Marquette. He's a little older. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he's a little older. But the whole thing is, they were still young, though. They were, they, right. Everybody was below 30. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I, I, that's why I look at it as being a little different. And now it's just out of control. Like, I don't even like the NBA. I, I'm thinking about, like, not watching next year. I like, I you think it, you're thinking about it, but you're going to watch it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think it starts, like, next week or something. I mean, it's, they do. It's yeah, they already yeah. had preseason. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Melo went off the other day. But, 
Um, I just don't like I just don't like super teams, man. It just get boring. Yeah, right. Yeah. So it's just a lot. Of, a lot of people think these super teams take away from the. Uh, you know, it it changed the landscape of the NBA, right? And it said, hey, it, it it forced a lot of these small market teams to not to be able to compete. You know, yeah, and uh, it but, uh, but it's not even fair. Mm -hmm. So so I look at it though, like it, you know, really, I don't really think the the market has much to do with as much the team, right? Because Miami Miami is considered a small market team. They're not a huge. They're not a New York Knicks. Miami. They're not a Lakers team, but it's Miami, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. What, what can you offer? these players to entice them to come play for your small market, you know, and, and a lot of owners uh, and whatnot, they fail to convey that message properly, you know, mm -hmm. to these players, you know, all they, all they want to talk about is, Hey, we can throw you a 225 million max contract. I'm like, Hey, any team can do that. So what else do you have to offer this player? Can you get other players over here? You know, and, and if you can do that, you know, hey, I, I'm thinking uh, Giannis is going to be in Miami real soon. I, I'm hoping so. We'll, we'll yeah, see. Giannis was smart. Now, I will tell you, I will tell you, though, I don't want Giannis in Miami if it means we're giving up half the roster and we tying our hands like we did with LeBron James. Oh, okay. you're going to have to. <clears throat> you're, giving, you're giving up somebody, bro. You can't. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm okay with giving up, a, you know, a couple people here and there, man, but I, I don't think, you know, they should be giving up. Like Man. Bam out of bio. I don't think oh. they should be giving up oh, a no. Tyler Hero. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, these, these guys, was, are, they're he young. A little bit. He was cooking. Yeah, little bit. man. Mm -hmm. That's when they, they're young, was, and I, I think that they, gotta, they gotta have a lot more to offer. Yeah. Man, Miami, I think you guys could have beat the Lakers, to be honest with you. Yeah. I yeah. think so, too. I think we have, you know, one more piece in the right place. You know what I mean? Bam got injured a little bit in the, the, yeah. the finals, and uh, mm -hmm. that kind of hurt us, you know. And uh, as far as Jimmy Butler goes, man, I think. I think Jimmy Butler's a great player. I don't think he's as good as everybody thinks he is. I think he is good in spurts. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like yeah. Was, one game where he dropped 40-something points. Mm -hmm. and, and then after that, you know, he starts to defer. Yeah, yeah to like that. Tyler Hero. I'm like, dog, you're the leader. Bro, I'm like, bro, Tyler Hero was 12 years right. old. Why are you making exactly. you know, <laughs> like the focal point? Like, you really right. put, you really throw him under the bus. Because it's like, right. at the end of the day, it's Jimmy's team because he is it's the like, Jimmy's team. Yeah. He's the a veteran. Of the team, and you defer, bro. I need you. If you drop, I think this is my thing. If this is the finals, bro, I need you to drop 40 every single night. Every single night. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Like, that's the yeah. only way you're going to be able to even have a chance to win. If you got to yeah. drop 40. Like, you right. score 20, getting your little numbers. Nah, bro. <laughs> I need you to you know, be the heart of your team and just start taking 78 shots. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Do something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, but, nah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. I, I, but I like, I like, uh, I like Bam. At a, I, I, I like, uh, I think what I like about Jimmy Butler is he's not like the most pre finesse player, but he's, right. he's crappy though. I like how he just, he's a, he has a lot yes. of fight in him. Yeah. Yes, oh, yeah, he yeah, does. Yeah, he yeah. does. So I, I, you know, I noticed the flaw in Jimmy's game, man. And, and you guys probably don't watch the Heat the way I do, man. But I, you know, I kind of nitpick when I watch him. Mm -hmm. I noticed Jimmy is not really good at finishing close to the rim. He gets to the foul line a lot, and every time he's at the foul line, he's taking two shots mm -hmm. because for some reason he never finished. He cannot finish close. <laughs> if you got to watch the games now, and, and you see, he'll have a. A super easy layup, and he'll somehow he'll miss but, that. But, you know? And I'm like, man, you know, <laughs> I, I, like I said, I, I like Jimmy Butler. I think he can be more aggressive. Uh, he needs to work a little bit better on finishing around the rim. Uh, and, and and I think wholeheartedly, man, going back to we could have won that. Had it been D Wade in his prime with that same oh, exact oh, team, man, you swap yeah. out D Wade for Jimmy Butler. That's an upset. Oh, well, I think we that yeah. did, that would have been a wrap, in, yeah. in my opinion. You know, yeah. what yeah. I mean? yeah. D Wade had that that killer mentality. Like, hey, he going to the rim and he going to Anderson Veras out everybody at the rim. You know? He <laughs> didn't care, man. You you jump in his way if you want to. He might have only been six four, what two fifteen, something like mm -hmm. that, or maybe mm -hmm. six five pushing. I don't know how you know. Yeah. But he, hey, yeah. They they're gonna have to put LeBron and Anthony Davis to stop that dude. Because he wasn't gonna let nobody hold that team down. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Look, look, and look. that would have just made it easier for everybody else on the team, for Tyler Hero, for Bam, you yeah. know, for all those guys out there. Mm -hmm. you know, but Jimmy Jimmy did tend to uh defer. He did tend to defer a lot to them. And because of that, you know, the Lakers just started putting those guys on lock and like, hey, 
Now Jimmy ain't got nobody to defer to, but he still ain't being aggressive and attacking the way he's supposed to, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, at the end, it cost us. It, it You know, I'll be 100% honest with you. Mm -hmm. Going into it, I, I thought it was going to be a sweep. I said, oh, Miami about to get swept. I like, and, you know, cause I'm, I'm a Heat fan through and through. I love my team, but I'm a realist, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And, and, and I'm looking, I'm like, hey, there's no way we're going to stop LeBron James and Anthony Davis with the team we got. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I saw it coming in. I'm like, hey, we we about to get swept. You just go ahead and, you know, <laughs> in, in Miami, I, you know, in Miami, they like to bring the pots and pans out and start banging them in the streets. Mm -hmm. Every time we win a game, I'm like, hey, y'all just go ahead and leave them things in the cover. <laughs> they not coming outside. <laughs> we about to get swept up in four games, man. But, you know, uh, hey, that's what I was telling you. They got my love. Out of your hand. <laughs> see it right there. I'll be like, hello, people. Yeah. See, see my little Korean, yeah. Korean people right there, boy. Oh, man. It's right on schedule, boy. That's funny. I, I told you it was going to come through. Uh-oh. There, we, we, go. Back. there we, go. <laughs> we back. There we go. We back in Miami. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah. So, I want to um, so I want to start with, say, Miami. I've never been to Miami. And right. um, so, what, you know, like, if somebody wanted to visit, say, like myself, you know, what are some things that, first of all, when's the best time to go to Miami and some things Ooh. to do in Miami? So, it, so things to stay away from. I heard like little Haiti or something, or <laughs> Haiti or Haitian, whatever. So, so let me tell. Miami is like any other city, right? Like any city, you're always gonna have your good side. You're gonna have your not so good side, right? I, I don't want to bash my hometown, but mm -hmm. there are parts of it, you know, that uh, that Miami wants you to see, and those parts are what bring the tourists in, right? That's what generates a lot of that income, a lot of that money. Um, and then there are other parts they don't really want you to see. And, and you'll know it. You'll know it because you, you'll be driving down the road and it's like rich house, rich house, rich house, poor house, poor house, poor house, poor house. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm on the wrong side of town. You know, now you got to turn around and go back. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that, that's how Miami is. Uh, if, if you're going there to visit, you know, you, you definitely, as a, as a tourist first time, you know, you want to hit up things like Ocean Drive, South Beach. You know, uh, but I will tell you if you, you know, you go to South Beach, uh, just be prepared. You know what I'm saying? And make sure your spouse is prepared, not just you. Make sure your spouse is prepared. All right. Uh, and you know, me being from Miami, my wife being from Miami, we grew up in it. You know, so we kind of understand the Miami vibe. Right. You got people from all over the world traveling to Miami and a lot of people from South America coming to Miami. And, you know, the, the women are walking around on the beaches sometimes in, in, in not family-friendly attire. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, 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 I, yeah. The thongs and all. I go front like... Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, if, if you got a spouse that's not prepared to see that type of stuff or, you know, they're the jealous type, you know what I'm saying? You might be getting looked at like, why the hell did you bring me here for vacation? You know yeah, what I'm saying? I, yeah, I, I remember um, it was like maybe 06 or 07. Uh, it's my wife now, but we were like just dating at the time. We went to uh, Miami. Uh, it was her her sister uh, wanted to do like a couple's trip. It was like me, me and uh, my, my wife, who was my girlfriend back then. It was, you know, my sister-in-law and her husband. And then it was like another mm -hmm. couple that that they just knew. And, and yeah, you're right. Like I, there's like there's like a like some like a celebrity feel to uh, something about man. Yes. We was on we was on Ocean Boulevard. It's, it's, it, like you may not know who they name, but everybody just looks like supermodels or famous or something. Like if you go to that South Beach, we right. we stay right there on the strip of Ocean Boulevard where you could just walk across. The right, street. right, right. Wow. Yeah, but but, yeah. but you, you're right. You it was like everybody was like a like a swimsuit model. You know, men and women. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It was, it was crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's a you know it's. It's a very materialistic city, you know, I'm not going front, you know, um, it's a real fast party lifestyle there, you know, um, but it, if, uh, as long as you don't get swallowed up by it, you'll, you'll be all right, you know, and what I mean by that, you know, a lot of people who grow up there, they kind of get swallowed up into that lifestyle and then they can't leave it, you know, I, I got friends who have left Miami and then, you know, they turn around and years later, they're like, I got to go back. You know, I can't stand being away from Miami. You know, it, it finds a way to suck you in. You know, there's a lot to do there, man, a lot to see. I mean, everywhere you look at, you know, some of the most beautiful beaches, places to eat, um, people to meet, you know, uh, you know, there's family friendly stuff as well. You know, um, I, I'll tell you, one of the biggest things down there is food, man. 
Because uh, like, like, like you mentioned, uh, Preston, you know, you got little Haiti down there. You got little Cuba, little Jamaica. Um, I it's mean, got to be authentic. Dude, uh, everything, uh, everywhere you go, you can get any type of food you want to get. Man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think besides New York, you know, Miami is like one of the biggest melting pots, you know, in the United States. Uh, besides your other big cities, your New York, your Los Angeles, you know, okay. things like that. Uh, I think up north, you know, uh, they stick a lot more to, you know, like your, your Puerto Rican style food, things like that. Uh, out in L.A., you got more of the, the Mexican. Uh, Mexican. Yeah, yeah you know, uh, yeah, but down in Miami... Right, right, right. Down in Miami, man, you got everything from South America coming up. I'm talking about Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, Venezuela, uh, Cuba, now uh, uh, Puerto Rico. It's all right there in Miami, you know, uh, Jamaica, the Bahamas, everybody. You know, they all come into Miami. You know, they bring their cultures with them. Um, you know, they, they bring their food with them. I mean, so, so if you're a food person, Oh, Miami's heaven. I, I would tell you, for, as far as me personally, because uh, I live up uh, in Augusta now, Augusta, Georgia, mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the biggest things that I miss about Miami. And, oh. and every time, oh, yeah, every time me and the kids go back, we got our little spots mm -hmm. uh, that we hit. You know, we got what they call uh, riconcitos. Uh, it's like little spots that got food in them. They make uh, authentic food for you. We got our, our little hot spots that we hit every time we go back. My kids are like, hey, we want to go here. We want to go there, you know. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's a great experience, you know. I, I think everybody should go out there every once in a while, you know, have fun, you know, but don't get stuck there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I say, I it's go. got a way of pulling you in. Right, right. So, we'll go one of these days. So, like, uh, I, yeah, I know, like you said, it's like a party city and stuff like that. So, like, what was, right. you know, once upon a time, what was, like, your experience in, like, the nightlife or, like, the lounges or the clubs down there when you was on there? So, uh, clubbing, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let me get my pen and paper. <laughs> so, so as far as party life, man, there, there's tons of clubs all out there around the beach and whatnot, right? Uh, you have a great time. I used to hit up personally the Hard Rock a lot. So the Hard Rock's a little bit more north of Miami, uh, going towards like Fort Lauderdale area, because mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot of clubs all in one spot. You know what I'm saying? And um, I mean, I used to get wasted up in them things, man. Uh, <laughs> with my wife, you know, my wife I'm with now, we used to go up in there. Let me caveat. Let me caveat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Clear it up. Clear it up. So uh, we used to hit them up a lot, man. Uh, different clubs and whatnot. Uh, eat. Even the strip clubs out there, man. Uh, and me and my wife up in the strip clubs. <laughs> King of Diamonds. No, boy, they had all, uh, what's that? Uncle Luke, hey. live crew. And yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, I know for that. But you know, we 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 were young, you know what I'm saying, and and you know, I, I'm like, hey, my cousins are going. I tell, you know, she was my girlfriend at the time. I'm like, yo, baby, they finna hit up the strip club, and you know, everybody's curious. I'm like, hey, I ain't never been to one. Let's go. So we all, <laughs> hey, we all pack it up and run up in there, you know, and uh, you know, people dancing in front of me, my wife, my cousin. We all looking at each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but, but like, like, you, like you said, though, you got to have like a secure girlfriend or wife to go, you know. To, to, to yes. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. You definitely got to, you know what I'm saying? And, and like I said, for me, it was it was never hard because my wife is from Miami, you know what I'm saying? So I never had to explain anything about the lifestyle of Miami to her because mm -hmm. she grew up in it, you know what I'm saying? Like she knows, she understands the vibe there, mm -hmm. uh, how things are, why people do things that they do, you know, that other people may, you know, it may come off as awkward, you know, like yeah. in Miami, um, you know, they're real big at meeting each other and, and kissing each other on, on the cheek, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, like they think they're in Paris or something, you know what I'm saying? But that's, that's just the lifestyle, there, you know? So you meet new people, like, you know, my wife will introduce me to a friend of hers. She'll just come and kiss me on the cheeks, you yeah. know? Really? And somebody else may look at that and be like, yo, what the hell is that Oh, about? yeah, yeah, because you know I'm definitely going to be like, uh, so you want these hands right. now? So, yeah, yeah. So so I can tell you, if, if you're not comfortable with that, you just kind of stand back where they can't really get to your face real yeah. quick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, but if you're standing close, like in a group, you know, they, they'll do that. You know, Maybe not so much with COVID now. Uh, yeah, I'm about to say, COVID going you know, to change the game. Yeah, gonna be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, now everybody just doing elbow. Right, right, right. Right. Don't this but, <laughs> right, right, right. But, you know, like I said, you know, so some people that may come off as awkward or other people may take the wrong idea by that. You know, I'm like, hey, bro, like, 
she don't like you. Everybody kisses everybody on the cheek here. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just what they do. Okay. You know, they, they they have their own little way of doing things down there. You know what I'm saying? Now that's so, tight, yeah. though. Like I said, um, I'm not a beach type person. Like, I don't swim in ocean. Right. Like, I might, I no, might stick to swim man. in the ocean, and that's about it. I'm not really, you know, right. I'm, I'm too paranoid about, you know, sharks and stuff like that. So I'm trying to get over that. Especially trying to right. be a traveler, I'm trying to be like, all right, well, I'm gonna try to go right. scuba dive, or I'm gonna try to do whatever. Like, most I did, I did a couple. Uh, I went snorkeling a couple times, whatever. But and that was pretty cool. But uh, yeah. I still was kind of like scared, you know. I'm saying that's just like, so I know Jaws gonna come out around <laughs> this rock and <laughs> go ahead. Oh, man. <laughs> ain't, ain't, ain't no shark gonna come up there and mess with you, man. <laughs> and, and a lot of times, you I mean, down in Miami, man. I don't know if you see the pictures behind me, the, the mm -hmm. water out there, man. It's blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at it, it like, it's, I, I didn't know it was that blue. Yeah, I didn't it, know it did. Yeah, when I went it, there. It's, first, it's pretty clear, man. It's oh, pretty yeah. clear. So it, trust me, if a shark is coming. You'll see it. You, you're going to see him coming from a ways away. You could just go ahead and walk out the water. And, you know, they got constant patrols that fly up oh, over, okay. uh, mm -hmm. up ahead. And uh, if they see sharks, you know, they'll, they'll announce it. You know, you'll hear them announcing it from the, from the helicopters and whatnot. And people okay. just get up and, I mean, yeah. if you uh, if you get ambushed by a shark, man, you just wasn't paying attention. Yeah, you went out too far. So. <laughs> yeah, you out there too far, man. So, I mean, you can you can go out there and swim and, you know, neck deep water and you'll be all right, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah bro, when I, went, yeah, when, I, when I went to that ocean water out there in Miami, like, you can look that, you can see your feet, everything. There, you yeah. know, it's, it's no murky brown ocean water like other places. It's like... <laughs> water up here, that shit got bodies. Nah, you see, you, know, you see everything. <laughs> like, I'll be like, who is out here getting the Potomac? Nah, you can see the sand. You can see the sand just standing up right. in, in the ocean. It's straight. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's it's clear out there. Every once in a while, you deal with uh, you know, your seaweed coming in, mm -hmm. uh, from from the tide and whatnot. So I know last time, me and my wife were down in Miami, probably about uh, I think it was about maybe about six months ago. We went down there before we came up here to Korea. We went down there to visit her sister and whatnot. Okay. Uh, and we went out to the to the ocean, and you know we just kids out there. And I tell hey, one last time, y'all go play in this water before we take off to Korea. Mm -hmm. You know, so they out there playing, but you know they had some seaweed getting washed up on. So you just gotta, you either move it out your way, or if you're scared to touch it, just walk around it because you know? you, okay. you'll see it getting washed in. But other than that, man, I'm telling it's it's a beautiful city. You know, I love it. The nightlife is there. You know, uh, you want to get up. I'm looking at that uh, background. I'm like, that should look beautiful. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You want to hit up, uh, you know, Bayside, do all your shopping and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can go down to the Keys. I mean, e even parts that weren't so, uh, that weren't so prestigious, you know, back back in the, in the uh, I'll say, 90s and whatnot, uh, have come up, you know. When, wow. when I was growing up, you know, like Homestead, uh, Naranja, Goose, uh, places like that, you didn't really want to go around too much, you know, uh, just because of, you know, a lot of uh, crime and whatnot around those areas, you know, but that's that's where I live, you know, so I didn't really see it, you know, I didn't really see it, or well, I did, but it, it just, to me, it wasn't the same, you know what I'm saying, I'm like, yeah, I get it, you know, mm -hmm. this, but this is where I live, you know what I'm saying. Uh, but now, as an adult looking back, I'm like, you know, I can, now I can see what they were talking about. <laughs> He's a little risque now. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, now it's it's come up. It's completely different now. Okay. You know, the, the whole area is completely different. You know, they like, um, gentrified. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I got my dog sitting right here playing. <laughs> you know me, I got two pit bulls, man. So, <laughs> Damn, sitting right here playing next to me. But good. yeah, you know, it's uh, it, it it is more gentrified, you could say, uh, you know, good thing and a bad thing, in my opinion, you know, it's good for the for the city, uh, mm. but it's bad for the people that they forced out of those areas. Right. Uh, but, you know, places that, uh, you know, where lower income families normally would migrate to to live, you know, because it was cheaper now that, you know, you got condos getting built there now, you know, you got townhomes that cost, you know, almost half a million dollars. Mm -hmm. you know, people can't afford that, so they pack up and move on somewhere else, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. I was just about to say, like, I know, like, the cost of living has to be wild, because like, even as a tourist, just, like you said, you, you got to come with, to Miami with money. You just can't come there off a yes. whim and be like, nah, <laughs> nah, nah. Like, we, like I said, when I went, I was like 07 or whatever, and 
we definitely have to make sure we, you know, we saved up so we can have a good time. Like you said, we did everything yeah. you were talking about. We hit the clubs. One of my favorite spots was, uh, it wasn't a club, it was more like a bar, but uh, Wet Willie's. Wet Willie's, yeah, Ooh. right there on Ocean Drive, baby. Man, I had, <laughs> I had, a, I had a drink. I had a drink called, uh, it was called a uh, Call a Cab. I can see okay. why they call it Call a Cab. Like, <laughs> like, like, because it was like a slushy or whatever, but it's like heavy with the alcohol. So I, I drank it like it was mouth. You barely taste the alcohol, but boy, when I got up, right. it was just that's all that, this. Uh, that's that party. Miami soju we were talking about right there. You just <laughs> sipping on it, yeah. and you don't even know until it hits you. Oh. You messed up, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I hit that. I hit that call a cab so hard. Like I, I, I don't even remember how I got to my hotel. Like, I mean, my wife was with right. me, but I like me walking to the hotel from Wet Willie's that night. I do not remember. For real. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it it'll sneak up on you like that, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, Wet Willie's is a good, great spot to go to. You know, like you said, that's more just of a drink spot. You know, you kind of just bust up in there, get you a drink, keep it walking. Mm-hmm. You know, because uh, you don't want to really want to be in Miami in one place too long. You know, okay. you, you miss a lot if you stay in one place too long. So, yeah, you, know, you got to constantly be moving in that city. But definitely bring some money. Or, or better yet, what I always tell people, if you're planning on taking a trip to Miami, uh, meet up with one, with one of your friends that live in Miami. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because, uh, you know, if you come with me, I'm not going to let you go out there and get raped like a tourist. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to take you to the spots where I know you're going to get your money's worth and you're going to okay. still have a good time. Mm-hmm. And you can still do the tourist thing, but you don't have to spend a lot of money to get wasted out there. You know what I'm saying? You just got to know the right spots to hit. If you staying around the beach area, oh yeah, they're going to get you. Oh, they're going to get prices. you for your money. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, because everything is expensive. But you know, you got to expect that it's a tourist trap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, but uh, if, if you meet up with somebody you know, hey, they'll take you around. Like I said, I can take you to other spots all around the city where mm-hmm. you can get wasted for a quarter of the price, you know. Uh, How many days? Now, 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 if you uh, mm-hmm. if you're trying to uh, live that lifestyle, then then by all means, you know. But just know you you got to have money. No, you better, yeah, yeah, you better have a good ass job to live that lifestyle. Yeah, I'm straight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm straight. <laughs> like, you got to be um, well, you got to be well into the six figures to be living that life down there, bro. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm good on that. But I want to know. So, how many days would you recommend? So a good recommendation on days. So it depends on how much you want to see. You know what I'm saying? If you want to do a quick turn and burn, by all means, you know, but if, if you're trying to go down there and really get immersed into that culture, I, I would say at least a week. A week. You know what I'm saying? At least a at least, you know, a good, you know, travel day, five days of out partying, and then you're gonna need at least a day to recover before you go back home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, at, at least a week because there, there's just so much to do in that city, man. Um, okay. and, and and I don't know if you know, man, but Miami is not just Miami, the city. Miami is from Miami. I mean, all the way down to Homestead. You know, uh, there's stuff to do from from the tip of Miami all the way down. You can go as far down to the Florida Keys if you want to. Really? Mm-hmm. Now that's not Miami, but yeah. you know that's just how much stuff there is to do from one tip all the way down to the other tip of, uh, of Florida. Mm-hmm. You know, well, not well, I know Florida. Dade big. County all the way down. Mm-hmm. You know, I flew into your airport. I was yes. like. Where the hell are we at? I was like, I, mean, I had to like, like my terminal was like on the up, man. I felt like it was another, like another city. I was right. like, pissed actually. I was yeah, like, bro, Miami International. I'm sitting there like, how big is this damn airport? They had so many wings, and I was like, yo, this shit is actually getting on my nerves. To be honest with you. Right. So, so Miami International is huge, huge airport. So, you know, you definitely want to plan ahead, especially you know where your connections are. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, they got your signs everywhere that are going to guide you and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, but I'll tell you, for as big as Miami International is, man, the Atlanta International Airport is even bigger. You think man. so? Oh, yeah, man. I'm talking about I was lost in Atlanta, <laughs> man. I, <laughs> I'm looking at the people like a helpless dog because I didn't know which way to go. The lady right. said, baby, and you know, in, in the South, they call everybody baby. Uh-huh. Come here, baby. You lost? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm lost. <laughs> Yeah, you see, she said, you need to go down these stairs and you got to get on that train and take it to the yeah. other side. I said, man, y'all got a train in this airport? <laughs> and I was lost, man. <laughs> I ain't never looked at it like that. I like a, I like the way Atlanta is set up, though, because I didn't fly out of Atlanta about a billion times. Right. So I'm comfortable with Atlanta. 
Like, I understand right. the train systems and stuff like that, but Miami just caught me off by guard. I was like, man, what the hell is this? Because you got to walk from one side to the other. I don't yeah. remember catching no trains or anything. It was just like, uh-huh. you got to walk. Yeah, you and, just uh, got to flip. Like, and, and that's what makes it seem a lot bigger is the fact that you're walking everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was talking Atlanta doesn't seem as big because you get on the train and take you to your next spot. You get all yeah, walk up to your train. Maybe that's the reason why I don't look at it. But if, if you look at it, man, Atlanta is huge, man. So, so yeah. going from Florida, so let's, call, let's mm-hmm. talk about Germany. So how would you, you know, what was your experience for, you know, Germany or whatever like that? I know we was there um, pretty much the same time. You got there before me, but right. roughly the same time. So Explain to people, like, you know, about Germany. So, let me see. Germany. Oh, man. I don't know. I don't even know where to begin about Germany. Right? <laughs> so, I'll, I'll begin with this. I'll begin with this. First, I loved Germany. And, and if I could go back, I would go back in a heartbeat. Um, and and it's, it's even to the point where I've talked to my wife about applying, once I'm out of the military, applying for dual citizenship with Germany. Uh, you know, just to be able to space A and travel there as much as I want, man. Cause, okay. Uh, we just, we loved it over there, man. I mean, Ger- Germany itself, and, and I don't know why people, you know, have a, why it has such a bad rap for the food and whatnot, but man, I love them schnitzels and pumas, man. Schnitzel <laughs> <laughs> and pumas. Uh, and pumas, there we go. <laughs> I mean, I, I loved all the food over there, man. And, and Germany is just different, you know, uh, where in Miami, you got places to go see uh, like let's say like the Vizcaya Museum for once, right? That that's like a big like museum uh, that used to be a house that belonged to somebody, right? Okay. Uh, but you see stuff like that in Florida, but in Germany you're looking at actual castles. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, that that were built you know thousands and thousands of years ago. You know, yeah. and you're like, man, you know, there's so much history there. You know. Miami, Miami doesn't have as much history because, you know, Miami back in the, you know, in the early days, you talk about in the 60s, 70s, that, that was more a city that people went to, to retire, right? Yeah. Um, and then in, in, in 92, you had Hurricane Andrew just coming in and just completely like devastate that. everything. Mm-hmm. And, and I was there when that happened, you know, I was in, in, the, in the bathroom, crouched up. Dang. Like a little, like a, I was a baby, you know, I wasn't a baby. I was probably about uh, 92. I was about I think seven or nine years old something like so I remember it vividly mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. um, I remember the roof getting uh, split wide open and I'm like man th- this is it for us you know we, we're done you know um, all right. and if you've never been in a hurricane never been in a hurricane it, it is one of the the scariest experiences that you can experience as a person you know because uh, you, you you see it and, and you see it on on the uh, the news the hurricane and I, I think Andrew hit. I want to say it was August twenty fourth, nineteen ninety two. You see, you, <laughs> oh yeah, it was two days before my birthday, man. <laughs> Damn. You know I'm gonna remember that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you know you you see it coming in, and you don't think much of it, you know, especially as a kid. You know, you see the adults all panicking and and they're boarding everything up. Uh, so I would. That's one thing I would go back and caveat about travel to Miami. Don't don't go there during hurricane season, if there's a hurricane en route to Miami, Mm -hmm. you know, because as a tourist, you're not going to know what to do. You are going to be lost and you're just going to have wasted your money because you're going to leave that city real quick. Mm -hmm. Okay. (laughs) But you'll see the the residents that live there. We don't panic the same way, right? Because we go through it every year. But um, yeah, you do best you can. You know, you go through, you board everything up and uh, you pick, you know, what you think may be the safest spot in your house to, to bunker down, you know, uh, be it a bathtub or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, I got some little kids coming up to my door. It's snowing outside right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like I was saying, you just hit, you know, you find the, the safest room you can and, uh, you know, you just bunker down and, and you know, hope hope for the best, you know what I mean? I, we ended up moving. Uh, so my house got completely destroyed, the house I was living in, mm-hmm. uh, the apartment actually. Yeah. And from, we went to my grandmother's house and, uh, yeah, we just kicked it in there and, we wrote it out, you know what I'm saying? So they definitely scary. Uh, I, I would never want to go through something like that again, you know, but uh, I think that's I'm one like, of those. You're never oh, moving back. Like, would you move back to Miami? No, 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 I would not. But not really for that reason. You know, I got other reasons for why I wouldn't go back. Like I said, that, that city is a, uh, it's a, it's a real fast paced city, you know, and, mm-hmm. and having two daughters, 
you know, that's one of the things that me and my wife talked about, you know, would we move back and, and, and raise our, our kids there, you know, because uh, we've thought about it, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, we always come back with the answer being no, no okay. we wouldn't. especially not two girls, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I, I got, you know, no knock on nobody down there, but, you know, I got friends and, and whatnot who got girls and, and I see the difference, you know, I'm like, man, your girl's 12, but she acting like she's 20, you know, mm-hmm. and, I, and I got a 14 year old who's a 14 year old, you know, yeah. I mean? yeah. So, you know, it, and, and that's just a product of, uh, of that city, you know, mm-hmm. the culture and, and just the, the, how fast that city is, you know, so Mm-hmm. As a parent, no. Uh, when my kids are grown and, and, and they done moved on, and uh, then me and my wife may go back one day. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but like I said, we, we definitely go back to visit a lot, you know. Uh, a lot of fun down there, man. But, but as much fun as I've always had in Miami, I don't think nothing compares to w- what I saw in Germany. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Germany changed my life. Like, <laughs> Germany is, I'm telling you, like, I've been to a lot of countries and Germany is just amazing. Like Europe in general is amazing for me, but yeah. Germany was like clean, yes. you know, very low uh, balance or whatever, like crime. Like right. I, I didn't really see no homelessness. Um, right. Just, just nice. I mean, it's, and I ain't gonna lie, it does get a little gloomy though. So yes. if you want to know that's on the edge, you know, that old cloud might come over. <laughs> Yeah. So, so I, I, I actually, it's funny you mentioned that because I, I had a friend of mine that was, uh, you probably remember him, uh, Sanchez, that used to be down there with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, not Caesar, uh, uh, Manny uh, Sanchez. Dirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, dirty, dirty. <laughs> dirty. <laughs> dirty Sanchez. <laughs> yo, he don't, yeah, I said, um, I said him on Facebook the uh, other day. He got the long hair. I mean, he looked like yeah. he's straight he from He looked like Jesus. So I'll be like, hey, man, what's going on? <laughs> and he was not lying. When he said he was going to retire, he's like, yo, when I retire, I'm growing my hair out. And, you know, I was like, yeah. you would never think he was in the military just by no, like, you would. whatever, whatever. I was like, wow. Shit, you, you wouldn't think he was in the military when he was in the military. Oh, yeah. I'm like, dude, he are you stolen shit. valor, man? Like, did you get this uniform from somewhere? <laughs> stolen oh, valor? Yeah, so funny. <laughs> yo, because, man, he needs to be like, He'd be like, nah, fuck that shit, Sarge. He'd be yeah. like, nah, Sarge, I'd be like, the way, the, the way he would talk to him, that dude had no tact at all. He wasn't tactful <laughs> talking to anybody. Yeah, right? he, first time I'd be like, hey, I need y'all to do that. Nah, fuck that shit first time. We ain't doing that. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yo, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I like I'm him. up there, I'm up there first time every day briefing. Mm-hmm. And they like, what's wrong with your boy Sanchez? I'm like, Oh, uh, here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was he was he was funny. Yeah. He was funny as hell. Actually. But yeah, he he was one of them people that uh, I remember when I first got to Germany. He warned me about that, you know, about the. Uh, so it, it is always kind of gloomy over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, there's always like like a cloud overcast for some yeah. reason uh, during certain parts of the year, and he was like, you know, just you know, be be mindful. You know, some people get depressed. Yeah. You know? Uh-huh. Uh, so if you one of them, it's in the winter. It just got yeah. dark. Early, yes, yes. early, real early, yeah. and it's cold yeah. and it's snowing, and you know, if for as fun as snow is, you know, eventually you get tired of it. You're like, you know, yeah. now I'm miserable. I uh-huh. need some heat. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> uh-huh. you know, if you're definitely one of them people that, uh, that you know, men- mentally, you know, you might, uh, you know, have a lot some challenges or whatnot. Um, you know, you just got to be mindful of that traveling up there during the winter. Now in Miami, that's, that's Miami in the winter time yeah, right there. It's all year round. This is year round. Man, I could do that so, all day. So, so let me tell you one thing about people from Miami though. And I, and I'm embarrassed cause I used to do it. Right. Oh man. Oh man. <laughs> so, so it ain't like Germany, right. You know, in Germany, man, eventually you adapt to the cold over there, you know, mm-hmm. and even, even here in Korea, I've noticed, you know, it gets down into the twenties and I'm outside in a shirt and some shorts because it's always cold here. So you get used to it, you know, yeah. Germany was the same way in Miami is never cold, you know? So if it does get cold and, and by cold, I'm talking about like 50 and below, you know, mm-hmm. anything, maybe under 50, I'm talking about you, 
you wrapped up like you you a you a damn Eskimo. Yeah, you wrapped up like you're, like like you in New York somewhere. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> man, man, these old Miami you women, see, boy, brutal. Yeah, you see you see the females come out with the biggest UGG boots, biggest jacket, <laughs> scarfs around their neck. You know, but you can't blame them. You know, and everybody makes fun of people from South Florida because of that. They're like, oh, you know, South Florida winters, fifty two degrees. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and around the country, that's not considered cold, you know. But I'm like, but you got to understand, in South Florida, it's never cold. So when it does get cold, we don't have time to adapt. It just smacks you real quick. So you got to dress up to get warm, you know. And then the next week, it's hot again, you know. That that's just what we're trying to get. but you know, you don't have that issue in Germany. You know, in Germany, it's it's you know, when it's cold, it's cold. That's for months up. at a time, you know, so you have time to adapt to it and, you know, uh, you dress down as you need to, man. Uh, and and that's that's probably one of the best times to actually do traveling in Germany is during the winter time, you know, okay. uh, because not so many people are traveling during those times, you know, and if you have time to acclimate to that colder weather, you get to see, you know, things during winter you know, that you wouldn't normally see during the spring and summertime, you know, and I'm talking like castles covered in snow and things like that, you know, um, towns, you know, with, with snow all up over the tops and you just see, you know, like, like a picture, man, the smoke coming out the chimneys, you know, mm -hmm. it, it looks like a picture, like a winter picture, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, traveling during the uh, spring is also good, but you just got to understand around Europe as a whole, um, it's best to travel during the winter. Like me and my wife, man, we, we went up to, uh, from Germany. I think we hit Paris probably about five or six times while I was there, you know, um, and it just did a lot of traveling and we went during the spring, uh, during the summer. And then I think three times during the winter, during the winter, we didn't have to wait in any lines to do anything. You know, really? uh, the roads were always clear, you know, we just traveled around, did everything we wanted to do. It's just, you got to know to dress up, you know what I'm saying? Dress up for the winter. So, uh, while we were there in Germany, we also went down and hit up uh, Austria. You know, we went and saw Austria. We went down to Italy to uh, meet with some uh, friends of ours that uh, stayed down there. Um, he was stationed in, uh, in Vicenza, Italy, and he took us all around that area uh, out to the, uh, nice. oh man, to Venice. Yeah, the water city out there, man. I mean, that, that was insane to me. I ain't never seen something like that where you got a shop and it's right there on the water. And I'm like, yo, that water's coming into your shop. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you gonna <laughs> yeah, you go put some sandbags down. Like, nah, we're good. It's, that's just the way to, okay. You know? <laughs> hey, your shop, bro. I'm just it's your shop. I'm trying to warn right. you. You know I'm, what I mean? I'm help you out, man. <laughs> <laughs> so. But I mean, Europe as a whole was an experience, man. And it is one that I will never forget. You know, I think, uh, so, we, you know, living in the United States, I think we, we take, uh, we take that for granted sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because there's so much within one state that you can do and we don't really venture out and travel to other states, you know, <laughs> Oh, at all. but there's so much all around the United States that you can travel and go see and go do. And it may be easier, you know, especially with your, with your blog for first time travelers, because they'll get used to flying around and, you know, and it, the reason I say it's easy is because everybody, you know, usually speaks English and signs are in English. You know, mm -hmm. if you're a first time traveler and you just decide, hey, I'm going to take off to Korea, South Korea. Oh, it's a wrap. Uh, you're in trouble. Yeah. yeah, you're in trouble because uh, you're gonna, you're gonna get to, a book, it, to, to see. Yes. To see a sign here in English is like. God sent, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I, and, and even even if they they do put it in English, they they try to interpret it to best help us. Yeah. It's in a way that we don't really understand, you know what I'm saying? So, like for instance, um, just just right around the corner from my house, you know, there are signs in Korean how to get to the U.S. military installation gate, right? And the gate, the English translation that I know is they call it Yoon Gate, right? Uh, y O O N. But on the sign. It says it in Korean, then they translate it, and that shit say Dong Che Ri Gate. And I'm like, well, that's not our gate, because that don't say Yoon Gate. So I just kept going. <laughs> and for the longest, I couldn't find the entrance to the damn base. And I and I call, I actually call, you gotta you call your realtor, man. So the realtors here, they serve more more purposes than people think. You know, people yep. think that your realtor here for your house 
is just your middleman between you and the landlord. Oh, if the yeah. landlord don't speak English. Yeah, the landlords here don't speak no yeah, English. Like you got to talk to your realtor for everything. Damn. Yes, that's why you got a realtor. And they're not real. They're not really realtors. I've noticed that's just what they call themselves. Yeah. They're just property managers. You know, mm -hmm. in the states, that's what we would call them—a property yeah. manager, right? Okay. So you call your realtor, and I, you know, you tell them what's going on. You know, they're your link to everything in Korea. If you don't understand something, even if it's got nothing to do with your house, like if I'm two hours away and I'm lost, I call my realtor. Hey, I'm lost. There's a sign. I'm gonna take a picture. I'm gonna send it to you. <laughs> tell me what to do. You know, that's oh, like wow. your personal, that's like your personal liaison between you and South Korea. You that's know like, that sounds like a lifesaver, bro. Oh, it is. It is. And, and trust me, uh, my realtor, Ming, Mina, shout out, shout out to Mina. <laughs> she, she done saved my ass a couple times already. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and, and like I say, but if you're coming here as a traveler, you know, and you don't really understand anything at all about Korea, uh, the language, you know, the, the culture, the way that they are, you're going to be in a big shock. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so you may want to stick, you know, uh, you may want to stick to the more tourist areas because mm -hmm. those tourist areas, uh, they try and uh, they try and make it in a way to where they know people are tourists are coming in. So, yeah. you know, you'll see more signs in English and things like that. But if you like me, I'm not in a tourist area. I'm out here in, in like, consider, like, yeah, and Pyeongtaek. So we got a city called Pyeongtaek right next to us. But I'm out here like on the farm side because I don't like to be that close to that many people. Mm -hmm. You know, ain't nothing in here out, out here in English because there, there ain't no tourists out here. They're like, hey, you either going to read Korean? You in the real Korea. Like, yeah, yeah. You in the real Korea over here. They're, they're not, they're not going to babysit you here. So you got to learn. You know what I mean? So, okay. It's been a, a learning experience coming out here to Korea, I would say, so far. Uh, I'm, I'm jumping now from Germany to Korea. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry yeah. about that. I ain't oh, even let y'all tell me when when to oh, jump over, hey, but I'm, I'm in fine. it, so we, yeah, yeah, we're just going to keep it going. <laughs> yeah, let's roll with it. We good. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so, and, and, and I think, uh, you know, just coming over here is, is different. You know, we've, uh, me and my wife, we've already gone out. We went out. A big thing out here is hiking, you know, hiking, yeah, biking, things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. So we went out there hiking, man. And, and I will tell you, uh, that was an experience. First time, first time ever hiking like that to the top of a mountain. Uh, we plan on going to another one soon where you can actually take pictures from the top, you know. Okay. Uh, and, and <laughs> so, and this is one of the things too about uh, having, knowing a little bit of Korean, right? So, so we, we took this hike, right? Me and my wife, uh, me and my wife and the kids. So we started our hike. And uh, we got to this, uh, it was like a fork in the road. And I'm looking at the fork uh, on, the, on the path. I'm looking at the fork on the path. And I'm like, all right, we can go left or we can go right. You know, but the, the sign is only in Korean. And it says, uh, and I see left is a red arrow, right is a, is a, a blue arrow. And I say, hey, I don't want to go red. We're going to take, we're going to drink this blue pill is what we're about to do, right? We're taking a blue pill today. Uh. <laughs> so. We all went with the blue side. So, you know, it, it was beautiful. We, we, we were hiking up, up in the trails. You know, we went over some stairs, uh, you know, because uh, there are some parts of the, to the mountain that are just too steep that they actually built stairs to help you get up, right? Oh, okay. Uh, we came up on this night, real nice little beautiful waterfall, like tucked in behind these rocks and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we hit, you know, maybe about an hour, uh, hour, 15 minutes into the hike, you know, we're, we're coming up this other part. And the whole time we're hiking up, I'm looking back, right? Because, you know, me being military, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit better and faster at moving with a purpose. You know what I'm saying? I move with a purpose yeah, wherever I go. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I'm not trying to take in no sights. I'm trying to conquer this mountain and get to the top, right? So, but my wife, she's doing things differently with the kids and whatnot. They're out there, uh, you know, they, they're doing this, the, the tourist thing. They're taking pictures. But every once in a while, I look down from my position down to that position, and I, and I could see them, you know, maybe about a, a, a quarter mile down from me coming up. Damn. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm range walking. Yeah, I'm range walking. Right. <laughs> he said a quarter mile. I thought you were going to say, oh, man, they're about 100 meters back. Yeah, no, no, no. They, 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 they back there, you know what I'm saying? All right, so, yeah, I'm looking back and checking in on the family and whatnot. So then I decide, all right, well, let me go ahead and stop and wait on them. So, you know, I stop and I wait. 
and uh, you know they they're catching up to me. But as they catch up to me, I noticed this uh, this older Korean guy. He caught up to me too, and then he passed me. Uh -oh. And I look, I'm like, oh damn, okay. So and he and he was he range walking. Beauty competition. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm looking like, oh, we got to get him now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so we get to a little rest area and we stop. We, you know, we stop. You know, me being the infantry dude, I had, uh, I had the uh, the beef jerky in the backpack with the cheese, <laughs> hey, with bottles <laughs> of water. <laughs> and, 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 I, yeah, so I told my wife, I said, hey, we got to pack this because we never know what will happen out here. If we get lost, we need some protein and we need some water to keep us alive <laughs> until we get back because I don't know where we're going, right? That's smart. So, That's smart. Yeah, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to make sure we're good, you know, mm -hmm. make sure my family's good, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I have my little knife with me, too, just in case, <laughs> you know, a bear want to show his ass, you know, me and that bear are going to fight. <laughs> <laughs> So, so while we sitting up there on the rest of, on the rest area, another another family caught up to a Korean family, right? They caught up to us, and I'm talking about we at the rest area breathing, ah, ah, you know, <laughs> and they caught up to us, and I'm looking at them, and I notice, my like, dad, y'all not sweating? What the hell going? And I, and I'm looking at my wife. I said, oh, damn. How the hell they catch us so fast? We've been out for about two hours already, and we just getting up here, and they already up here. So I'm like, all right, whatever. You know, I'm going to let it go. Right, we get to the top. We turn around. I'm like, hey, it's time to go back down. So we we start going back down, and uh, we hit our little stairwell again. I come up on the, on the sign going back down. It's got the blue arrow and the red arrow. Uh -oh. And I said, oh, man. I looked at my wife. I said, man. Let's take the red arrow this time and just see. We already saw the blue side. Let's go with the red side. Mm -hmm. We hit the red side. Uh, and when I tell you, in about 10 minutes, we were back at the start point to climb that <laughs> damn mountain. Man, let me tell you, I was so damn. I'm not going to say I was hot. I'm not going to say I was upset with it. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm glad we took the blue arrow to begin with because we got to see a lot more of that mountain. Mm -hmm. But had I had just, if I knew how to read some Korean and I knew what that red arrow meant, <laughs> I'm going to guess that that damn thing meant shortcut to the top yeah, because exactly. in 10 minutes, the Koreans was red, up there at the top. <laughs> you said what now? Said, why the hell would it be in red? Red means I don't, I don't know. know. That, yeah, and that's what? that's what I'm saying. If you don't, if you can't read Korean, if you don't understand it, I'm going to make the best judgment call. To me, red means yeah, like that's danger. a dangerous way. Danger. That's, <laughs> don't go that way, right? <laughs> but coming back down, I found out that red arrow meant Shortcut. Go this way if you just want to get straight to the top and not take the scenic route. <laughs> yeah, I just so, like, God damn, it's hot out here. Like, hey, I'm talking about, I'm, I was out there on the rest thing laying down, right? <laughs> I'm, and this how, is this how discombobulated was, right? I, I was discombobulated already. I was trying to sip on water. I'm looking at my kids. They're tired. My, my youngest is like, come on, Dad, we can keep going. I'm like... I'm tired because I'm carrying everybody's gear. You know what I'm saying? I got all the gear with me. <laughs> they up there doing the selfies. I'm up there trying to catch my breath. That Korean couple, the Korean couple with the with the with the kid that passed us, they stopped at the rest stop and they spoke to us, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is how confused I was, right? The lady said, uh, what she said, uh, she said, what state are you guys from? Like that to me. Mm -hmm. in, in plain English, she said, what state are you guys from? I looked at her and I said, I'm sorry, I don't speak Korean, only English. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at my wife and my wife was looking at me and my wife looks at the lady. She said, we're from Florida. <laughs> and the lady said, oh, okay, first time up here. And then it clicked in my head, they speak in English to me. <laughs> <laughs> But I was so confused already at that point, trying to sip on my water. I didn't hear a word of English come out of her mouth, man. All I heard was Korean, and I just responded, I'm sorry, I don't speak Korean. No, I'm sorry, I don't oh. understand. <laughs> oh, you was done, bro. You was done. Yeah, I was done, man. I, I was done. I was tired. <laughs> but that's what I get for range walking it out there, man. And I think next time I'm gonna just take my time and yeah. you know we just enjoy it, you know. Yeah, slow stroll. But man. Korea, man, Korea has definitely been an experience. Uh, I like, you know, I got a lot more here. I want to see. I want to do. Uh, me and my wife, the kids. You know, Germany was an experience that that you know 
uh, we we can't ever we can't ever get those those memories back, right? Uh, and 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 like I always tell people, you can spend money on material things, or you can spend money on memories, things that your kids, your wife, you you're gonna remember, you know. And, and we may not remember them as vividly, but with technology, you know, you got pictures yeah, nowadays. Uh -huh. You take pictures, and you can go back and say, you know, we did this. You know, we climbed mountains in Korea. You know, I damn near passed out in Korea. You know, <laughs> I was on the, <laughs> I stood on the Neutronstein Castle out in Germany, yep. you know, um, a, a castle that people only see in pictures, you know, or when they go to Disney World, they yeah. look at the Cinderella Castle in Orlando and they don't relate those yeah. castles to Germany, you know, and not right. know that the architect that built them things got those designs from Germany. You know, we actually went and saw the real Hey, these are a you know, thousand pound bricks in these yeah. castles. You know what I'm saying? You can't beat uh, that. Th those are, you can't beat that. You know, you can't beat those memories, those experiences uh, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. My little Korean people behind me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, I love uh, uh, so Korea. Korea yeah. was dope. Um, I, guess I didn't do a whole lot. I mean, but I did go to like um, Daegu and right. Daegu and Kusan with the Kusan. I went to Jeju Islands. Okay. Um, where else I go? I mean, obviously I went to Seoul, you know, about a thousand times. Um, right. Because I had a car. So since I had a car, I had no family there. Shit, mm -hmm. we can't hit. I mean, a lot of times I took the train. The, the train system is pretty good. I don't know if you've been on the train yet. Yeah. Your train I haven't. Um, I got a car, but uh, we do plan on taking the train. But I'm going to go with somebody more experienced before I start doing that. <laughs> uh, I don't know <laughs> if you remember you Herschel. Herschel. Yeah. You remember Herschel Allison? Yeah, yeah, he he's up here in Daegu. Uh, yeah, I so we, another day, yeah. Okay, yeah, we plan on going down to uh, see him, I think, uh, this coming weekend. Um, so he's in Daegu, okay. I thought he was yeah. like Camp Curl, but okay. I, I think he was up here at Humphreys um, before. Yeah, I knew he was and then, location, then he got a promotion. Right. Um, yeah, he, uh, yeah, he got a promotion and they moved him down to, uh, I want to say maybe it's uh, Camp Walker, I think is what it's Camp called. Walker, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but that's down in the Daegu area. So, yeah, mm -hmm. we plan on going down there to see him. Uh, let let him take us out and let him show us. Oh, yeah. He's been and out I, for a minute. He's yeah, like, I, I, I'm local right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, is that Allison? I was like, yeah. I'm like, is he good? Like, was he on the game? Is he had shaved? He had the hair slicked yeah. back. I'm like, hair slicked back, shaved on the sides. I'm like, look yeah, at my I'm boy, like, man. I see the tattoos and something like, oh, this dude joined the gang. <laughs> <laughs> he joined the gang out here. He's flagging out yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, for but, real, uh, man. <laughs> yeah, like I said, um, and it's crazy, man, like how you said about the Germany thing. I was supposed to get, um, I got offered, actually, I got hired for a job in Germany this year. Okay. And, um, but I mean, I turned it down to stay here or whatever, but, and I'm like, and I'm, I'm glad I did because it's COVID. You know what I'm right. saying? But if it wasn't COVID, I think I would have took it. I mean, to get another five years in Germany as a civilian, making more money, you know, right. more freedom, because obviously I don't have to worry about anything. I don't make like, you know, there's no 1,700 formation. No, you do your eight hours and you go home. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So that's one of the you yeah, know, I got you. freedoms of being, you know, a civilian, I guess. <clears throat> but um, man, like, like I said, like I want to go to Korea so bad and just visit a couple more places. And then, like I said, you got Osan right there, and you can catch a hop from Osan. So this is what you should do. Because I did it without a passport, but you got a passport. But I went from um, I went from Osan to Yokota Air Base in Japan, and it's probably about forty minutes from to outside of Tokyo, and it's free. It don't cost you nothing. Right. And then, well, so once you get to Yokota. Um, you can do one or two things. You can like stay on lodging, obviously on post and it'd be cheaper than actually staying in, you know, on a city on uh, spending that yen. I, I don't know the yen rate right now, but at the time when I was there it was expensive. Mm -hmm. But like I said, they have they have a uh like a five dollar um like ticket, whatever, that you can buy and um it, to take you to Tokyo. Wow. And it's only like maybe like an hour and a half flight. That's so bad, yeah, I had a free flight. And uh, right. I mean, I don't know if it's still free, but like I say it was free when I went or whatever. But it was that um, space age stuff or whatever. Yeah, space age. So, yeah, space age. So, yeah, so I think the, the, the issue right now, uh, 
is that travel outside of Korea is restricted right now, right? Oh, yeah. Well, it, well, it's, it's not that it's restricted. It's that if you go out of Korea uh, without with the ETP, when you come back, you're going back into quarantine. Like oh, I yeah, said, well, you know, they, they ain't playing around. So I'm like, I don't want to spend two weeks in quarantine to go no, see no. Japan for two days. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good. I'm going to see Korea. Yeah. And, and, and I'll be happy with this. <laughs> Yeah, that's bad. So, yeah. <laughs> two days for yeah. two days? Hell no. Hell no. Oh, yeah. That's why I ain't went nowhere. Mm-hmm. People I got a couple of people I work with, they uh they've been traveling or whatever, and I'm like, nah. Mm-hmm. I don't even want to be on a plane to be honest with you. Like right. not right now. Right. So, I heard the planes be empty, but I just ain't really dealing with airports and you know, not if I don't have to. Yeah, I ain't trying to risk it all. Yeah, I ain't trying to risk it all. But yeah, like I said, it's yeah, been dope no. um, um, I definitely, like I said, I enjoy both of those areas. I think there's more to do in Europe, obviously, because you can drive and right. you know, a lot more stuff like that. But it's a lot of stuff in Korea that I didn't do. And they have a lot of uh, temples, a lot of shrines, a lot of stuff like that. You know, go ahead and put that traditional garment on. I know, you know, you oh, know yeah. we had, matter of fact, before, that, yeah, before we do anything, oh, something like that. Yeah. It, um, I was telling Ryan the story. We was with the Oktoberfest, and you slapped me okay. in the mouth with the uh, with the chicken, trying to force fed me some chicken. <laughs> like we still, talk. hey man, yeah, <laughs> we still brought Reese. We still bring that up to this day. They would never let that go, and I'll be like, hey man, you know what I'm saying? He was just like, so here, <laughs> I'm like damn, like. Hey man. Hey. But that chicken was good though, wasn't it? Was, it was. I can't even I can't even deny it. It was, it was salty. It was nice and salty. It was so it was salty, but it went well with that uh with that big beer. old liter of beer they gave us, man. Yeah. And, and and that's all I was trying to do, you know, trying to get you, you know, to, to broaden broaden your, your horizon a little bit, right? Yes, yeah, because you wasn't seeing Jose Vision, you know what I'm saying? He had to show you the picture. Right, right. Yeah, I was. right, right, right. Apparently I was tripping. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody out here ordering yeah. hens, because I was like, when I drink, I don't eat. Right? I either eat. I usually eat before. And he was just like, look, he was on a train or something. He's like, dog, you gotta try the chicken. You gotta try the chicken. I was like, oh yeah, I, you know, I might try it. I guess I wasn't moving too fast. I wasn't moving fast enough. He ordered that chicken. He was just like, he was like, Turner here. <laughs> and I was like, damn. But I was like. God damn, that shit is good. I was like, <laughs> I was like oh, okay, I see. <laughs> I was, I was upset for about thirty seconds. And I was like, but that chicken is good though. He was, was like, like, chicken is pretty good. <laughs> let me get some of that. There you are. I was like, this one was kind of good. That's so, funny. Yeah, yeah, we had a good time, and uh, and then I know we went to uh, Heidelberg and we saw the burning of the castle, yeah. the uh, the reenactment. Yeah, that was that was pretty. That's what I'm trying to say, right? Like, people real. I mean, obviously, the average person. Is not going to live in Europe, so we got to see obviously a lot more than the average person the average would. Person will unless they actually right. just move there, because it's different. Like when you visit, it's impossible to see everything. You gonna have to go about a hundred times. You know what I'm right. saying? But we like there, man. You got so many little cities and villages in um, in Germany, and like every village is different. And then, like you yeah. said, like right now you got the Christmas markets, and I really. That's one of the like top five things I miss about Germany is the Christmas markets. Mm-hmm. Like just the way they get into Christmas, it's way different than America. Like here, I mean, you hear about like uh, like Times Square. All right, Times Square gets lit up or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I'm telling you, man, you yeah. get to like Germany, it's nothing like it. Christmas markets. I'm talking about, man. You see all the trees and everything yeah. lit up. You get some of that hot glue vine and oh yeah, all that fresh glue vine, baby. Stuff. <laughs> that stuff is you give them big ass boots or something and you drink yeah. every beer out of a boot so yeah and hey, you know it, it, it's crazy you mentioned that right because you, you look at something like Gluvine right and we know what it is because we've been to Germany but being in the States I probably would never have I would never drink that because I'm oh, like what is that and they're like, <laughs> it's like a hot wine I'm like I don't want that shit yeah. you know what I'm saying <laughs> but oh, in like, Germany I, I mean even, even that, I was like I don't want no goddamn snizzle. <laughs> like, like, you know, I think the first time I had a snizzle was off a of gut truck. Oh, oh, yeah. I don't know what the truck is, but it's a, um, it's like a tr- like a truck that drive around with food, right? Okay. Right, right, right. Okay. It's like so it's like a food truck. Yeah, yeah, food truck. So 
and they're talking about that dude pull up, he out here saving lives. Because normally when it's a gut truck, that means you had somebody's field or somebody's <laughs> rain. Yeah. You ain't got no food. <laughs> you just stuck out there. And he pull up with that hot food. Man, I'm telling you, I'd be like, let me get two snizzles, dog. Let me go get two of them snizzles. <laughs> and then you, you come through that breaded. Uh, I mean, and that's the thing about German food. It's a pork chop, but it damn sure don't taste like an American pork chop. Whatever seasoning right. or bread or whatever the hell they put on there, it's a lot different. And I hated the um, the little sausages. Sometimes it was nasty to me. I couldn't do those. Oh, sausages. you ain't like the little brats? Hell no. Nah. I was like, no. Nah. <laughs> I'll tear them up. <laughs> My wife, so we got all these down the street from us right now. So right. she goes to all these all the time right. and get German uh, sausages all the time. And I'd be like, get that shit up out of here. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm <laughs> American now. Let's <laughs> eat some American sausage. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like, I'm saying, like, man, like, Germany got so many different types of bratwurst, currywurst. Right. Uh, they got all these damn worst. They got like 10, 15 different worst. And yeah. all of them ain't good. I mean, I ain't gonna lie about that. I I do the bratwurst, but right. the other shits. I be yeah, like, that that's that's something that I won't eat. Like the 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 blood sausages, I don't do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm good. Hey, blood yeah, anything. Like, yeah. <laughs> and that's not oh, but um, oh, see, y'all gonna have a good time, man. I mean, long as COVID, you know, let up a little bit. Like you gotta go to. Like, I don't know if you do amusement parks. You do amusement parks? Oh, yeah. So they got a uh, latte world. It's been sold. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's pretty much all indoors. Uh, Latte World's pretty dope. And then they got another one. Uh, I can't remember the other one, but Latte World's real dope. Like I said, man, you got so much stuff to do. Have you been to the DMZ yet? Nah, not yet. Like I said, we, ha we, haven't, uh, we, haven't, right, yeah. we haven't been able to travel too much right now. And Area 2 right now is actually off limits. Yeah, so, oh, yeah okay. they, uh, you know, anytime there's a spike in, in COVID cases, yeah. They start they start shutting down the uh, access to major cities and whatnot. They get it back under control. Oh, okay. uh, once they get everything under control, uh, then they go ahead and open it back up. You know, to allow travel to and from. Uh, now it, it's off limits for USFK personnel like myself. You know, me, okay. my kids, things like that. But uh, you know, just the regular tours. I mean, it's not off limits to them. Just to us. You know. Okay. Okay. And that's just to make sure we don't go up there and get COVID and bring it back to the base over here. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And then we got an incident on the base. And uh, I'm telling you, the, the measures that they're taking here in Korea, man, for uh, to combat COVID is is insane to me, man. Like, I've, I've never seen, like, so every place. over there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Big time. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. Every, every, every place you walk into here, like, for instance, last night, I walked into a restaurant to uh, pick up some food, a takeout order. Uh, but as soon as you walk in the door, you taking your temperature at the door. Damn. If your thing is irregular, you ain't going in a restaurant. Sir, it says 99. Sir, get the yeah. hell out. Right. They're going to slide that food out the door to you, but you're not walking <laughs> in that restaurant. <laughs> right? And uh, once you do walk in, um, you sign in. You have to sign in, you, you know, with your personal information on a, yeah. on a document there uh, for contact tracing. If anybody... Oh, wow. If, uh, if a positive case comes up, you know, they'll, they'll you know put a call out everybody that went to that restaurant within that time and put you back on lockdown. You know, Jeez. so it's uh, the, the measures here are are, uh, are a lot, you know, but it but it's worth it for the safety of everybody else around here, you know. Um, in, in America, can can you uh, can you implement something like that on a nationwide scale? Probably not, man. You know, it's, well, it's yeah, impossible. You can. I mean, you want to have some pride and force the military into it. It's going right, to take but really, who who's going to enforce it? You know, like you said, the, the military, the, the National Guard, right? Yeah. Because uh, the National Guards are the ones who enforce anything stateside. But yeah. But who, who who's the National Guard? Oh yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. you are. Let's say <laughs> if you you're you're in the military, right? Uh, if you were, you are the National Guard, right? You really going to tell your family members that you can't go outside today? They're going to look at you, man, fuck you, man. <laughs> <laughs> and what you going to do? Yeah. What you going to do? You know, well, you, that's the problem you I have. You can't with shoot them. You can't shoot them. You can't mm -hmm. arrest them. You can't do all you can do is sit back and let them do what they want. So, Hey, and that's one of the problems. I mean, I'm, I'm American. I love my freedom. But sometimes I do feel like Americans are a little too free at certain times. 
doing certain you know, instances. I'm like this, man. I just want this shit to be over with. Because yeah, I yeah. talked to other people, like, through the podcast that we met. Like, we didn't talk to people from Israel. We didn't talk to people from, like, um, the Ukraine and, you know, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. And they'd be like, like, I talked to this guy from South Africa uh, a couple of days ago. He was like, oh, we don't even have COVID here anymore. I'm like, he's like, yeah, well, we, he said, we stopped wearing masks, like, months ago. I'm like, <laughs> I'm they like, do it, they do it, they do what they're supposed to do. That's it. Yeah, he was like, he was like, their president or whatever they have. He was like, they put him on lockdown, and he was like, yeah, it's gonna suck for about you know eight weeks, but and he closed off the whole entire country. He said like, nobody in, nobody out. So that automatically, if you had it, I mean, either you was gonna die with it, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, or get right. cured, yeah, you're you gonna, gonna get over it. Yeah, and that's what happened. He said now, he was like everything open, gyms, movies, you know, uh, restaurants. I mean, he said it's almost like it never happened. And right, so, but, but obviously, their borders are still closed, though. Because right. that's the thing about it. You can do the right thing all day long, but if the if your counterpart is just like, oh, I'm out here, just, I'm in these streets. Yeah, I'm living, right. You know what I'm saying? And that's how America, like... <clears throat> well, Atlanta, Atlanta act like COVID don't exist. They out there wilding in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah I don't, yeah. So that's, and that's what I'm saying, man. Like, so, like, you know, I work for the government, so, <clears throat> you know, we got pretty much the same restrictions as, like, military. Like they, they gave us a list the other day. It was like, oh, this is what you're not gonna do. <laughs> I was like, damn. And I was like, okay. And they got a list, and they was like, you know, like you know, we in the DMV area. So they told us if we leave the DMV, if, if we leave this area, we have to go automatic quarantine, even if you got a right. negative test. And it's like, oh, we don't care about tests anymore. You got to go 100, percent you know, in quarantine. So right. Uh, and I'm like, well. Which is cool, but I don't plan on living in the area anyway. So, but yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense, right? It, it, it makes sense. Uh, but to to implement something like that, like you said, you got to give up some freedoms, and that that's one thing that people in America don't want to do. You know, oh yeah, uh, you're giving up nothing. The, the the last thing anybody want is to feel like the the government is now telling you what to do, right? Yeah, exactly, um, exactly. You know, and, I'm a pretty yeah, good type of guy. For the greater right. good, I'm okay. For the greater good, that's how right. I think. That's how, that's I how think. you think, exactly. Yeah, exactly. The average yeah. person, I seen a dude yesterday at the store, he had a mask, but his damn mask was on his chin. Mouth, nose open. And I'm sitting <laughs> there, I'm looking at him, and I almost caught myself saying, hey, man, put that damn mask back. I was like, you know what? I don't want to be one of them guys to end up on, like, YouTube. World star. World star. <laughs> <laughs> Because the shit yeah. gonna get he was a, World star. Yeah. He thought, he, he's an older uh, white guy who looked like he'd had a hard day. He looked like he looked, he looked like a mechanic <laughs> or something. So I was like, that's probably the last thing he wants somebody to say some shit to him. Especially <laughs> right. black man. Because I'm gonna like, immediately go there with you, you know what I'm saying? If it comes to that level, whatever. But yeah, I was just sitting there like, yeah, be good. Because I was like, if the store not saying nothing, I mean Why should I? Like, I? Why should I? Right. I was like, F it, you know what I'm saying? Let me go and do what I need to do. I put my mask on tighter and shit. I was like, oh, let me go ahead and tighten this thing up. Yeah, tighten this thing up. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm really hoping that this uh, this Pfizer uh, vaccine, you know, is is what they say it is. Um, I'll be 100% honest with you. I, I'm not going to get it first. Oh, yeah. I'm not yeah, in yeah. line. I mean, that first I'm, wave did it. Yeah, I'm going to stand back a little bit and see how these first people do with it. And uh, like I said, on, on my post that I posted before, you know, they come out the other end, okay, no side effects. I'm all for it, oh, baby. We can it. get it there. <laughs> the scary part is, though, you still in the military. Military be like, yeah, we need you to hey. go ahead and up and go and get it. Hey, so you know what's funny? I actually was thinking about that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I said, what the hell am I going to do if the military say, I got to get that vaccine? Like, I mean... I, at that point, I guess I got no choice, right? Yeah, we you got no choice. You, you, you like the lab rats for for America. I mean, that's they, one of them things. When I, um, on us. What happened when I went to Afghanistan? They was like, "Hey, you got to take these pills." I was sitting there like, "Well, you know, they talk about the side effects and shit." I was like, "Man, fuck that." <laughs> I took them pills for like two days. I was like, "Man, fuck these pills." I was yeah. like, and then and then they, they was threatening people with Article Fifteen. They was like. If you catch malaria or whatever, whatever, we give you Article 15 to yeah. get your pills. And I'm like, whew, hope I ain't no goddamn mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, like that shit, like, yeah. 
I'm not taking no goddamn vaccine. Mm-hmm. Like, not yeah, right I, now. I, I definitely don't want to be the the, the first way. Yeah. My my whole my my biggest fear that like I said, I, I I'm hundred percent sure that it works. A lot of scientists have worked on it and, and I trust them over anybody, right? Yeah. Any, any test that you can repeat and get the same results, I, I'm good with the conclusion in the end, right? Yeah. But if you telling me the long-term side effects are X, Y, Z, I'm like, how do you know that if you just made this damn vaccine two weeks ago? How do you know what the long-term side effects are? Like, you know, you got to inject some people with it and wait long-term to see what the, you know, I don't know if long-term you get cancer from it or long-term you're sterile now, you know what I'm saying? Or, yes. You know, I, I just don't know, you know what I mean? And, and I think that's what a, a, a lot of people are afraid of. Yeah. And I see all the posts on, on, on social media, you know, how social media is they're posting things like uh, you, you're telling me you eat hot dogs, but you won't take a vaccine because you don't know what's in it. I'm like, no, you, you're misunderstanding that message. Yeah. I don't give a shit what's in it. I don't <laughs> care what's in the damn vaccine as long as it cures me. I don't care what's in it. What I'm worried about are what are the long-term side effects of it, of me putting this stuff in my body. Yeah, that's a big difference, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, difference. it's a big difference. Big difference big there, difference. you know. So, like I said, if it looks like it's going well or if I'm in a situation where I'm forced to take it, then, then by all means, you know what I'm saying, I, then, then I got to do what I got to do at that point, you know. Uh, being military, I can't decline. Uh, I don't think I can. I've never have. I've never even asked if I can. I know maybe on uh, religious reasons I can decline something, uh, but that's about it. I don't it. know if any religious reasons for, well, I guess, well, there is, well, there's a certain type of religions that don't believe in like. Yeah, like vaccination. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. But they're going to be like, sir, your whole career you was this. Right. Yeah, hey, your whole you career know, you. You questioning my faith? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> let me know if you're questioning my faith at this point. <laughs> Because I'm telling you, and, and I hate to say it, but I'm not going to say the right name. So I got a homeboy, right? Uh, me and him were stationed at Bragg together. And, you know, I don't I don't know what he believed at the time, but he had a clean shave. You know, he looked like you, right? Right. He's still in the military. Active duty. Uh, you know, where I work at, whatever. This dude, he got the world's longest beard. Black dude. <laughs> um, his beard is like, dude, his beard is damn near covering his rank. Okay. And I'm sitting there like, I'm looking at it, I'm like, nobody questions you on this? He's just like, I wish a motherfucker would question me about this shit. He <laughs> said, but it's my religion. And I'm just like, oh, oh, okay, well, I, I mean, he well, said some people didn't question him. Because like where I work at, we work with some high up people or whatever. So it's like, you know, these ain't the running, this ain't no run of the mill type, you know, uh, you know, ranks, or whatever. So wow. I'm, I'm sitting there like, man, you got to be a bold motherfucker to walk around with a beard like this. I'm wow. just like, I need to like look what, yo, he looked like a, like a, like a, you know, old union soldier. You know, they had, they had them big, them big ass beards back in the 1800s. <laughs> he shit, yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, bro, you don't feel uncomfortable walking around. <laughs> <laughs> he just, and he just hit it. It's so funny, man. It's, it's funny as hell, though. But uh, but yeah, so. I've, I've seen a couple like that here, man. Um, really? You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, white white soldiers too, man. Same thing. Uh, you know, I know some of them claim. Uh, I, you know, I don't really know what the uh, re- re- the religious name for it, but kind of like a Viking or something like that. You know? Yeah, yeah. Their beards out. Right, right, right. Um, but there's some people who believe in that stuff. Yeah. Uh, and, and I, I, you know, you me personally, I think that's a good thing that the, the army is becoming more uh, tolerant, more tolerant to uh, and, and more accepting also of people's different views and religions. And, and, and I think overall, the army as a whole is doing a, a good job trying to move in the right direction. Yeah, that's dope. Uh, to, to, to fix things, you know. Uh, but at the same time, I, you know, I'm like, I, I wish they would just relax shaving standards across the board you know now if we coming into work you know with with twist in the beard maybe not <laughs> that you know what i'm saying but i would like to grow my facial out you know grow my facial hair out and not need a a, a, a razor and all that a, a reason right mm-hmm. i'm not gonna say a religious excuse because that's not what it is but yeah. you know having to provide some type of documentation like that showing hey i'm uh you know, growing my hair out because I'm X, Y, or Z, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, I, th- I don't see the issue with it. I know, you know, in the past they've said things about, you know, soldiers not being able to properly seal their masks. 
Right. Uh, the gas mask, especially being here in Korea, uh, if you have facial hair. Uh, but I'm like, hey, you know, that's that's got to be kind of one of them. If you grow your hair out and you die from a gas attack, yeah, that's on you because you risk. decided to grow your hair out. You that's know a risk, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and you know, I don't know about anybody else, but if you know, if I see a gas bomb hit over there, the first thing I'm gonna do is run in the bathroom and chop my facial hair off, and then put that gas mask. <laughs> no, <laughs> let me get this shave in real quick. <laughs> yeah, but you know, true. I you know. I, I, you know, that's, that is one of the things. That, and I think that, uh, you know, I think that the, the military is doing a good job right now trying to listen to the soldiers, the NCOs and, and move in a direction where we're a little bit more modern, uh, even if it's stupid things like allowing soldiers now to wear black socks for PT. Uh, where before you remember Preston, it was white only. White boy, but the white had them white socks only. If you had, you came in with black socks, you, you was done for the day. <laughs> You know, so that's a rap. I don't like that though. Oh, yeah, it was a rap back then. You know? I don't, I mean, I ain't super old, so it ain't like I came in the army in the 90s or 80s, whatever. Right. But I do, I hate to say, I do like the uniformity of things. I don't right. like black sock, white sock, black sock. I mean, right. I, don't, I don't like that. I mean, I just think they like <clears throat> doing PT, women can uh, have their hair down or whatever. Right. Yeah. I don't like none of that. I'd be like, to me, it looks horrible looking, but right. you know, I just how I look at it, whatever. I just like when you, you know, if you have long hair, you put that shit in a bun. I think right. it looks more managed, more kept, whatever, whatever. I mean, just for the same reason, like, um, you know, we had BDUs. It, it, I think it, it did give you a little bit more sense of pride because you're going to put some starch on that shit. Unless oh, you yeah. have a bag and you just waking up and just rolling from your uniform. But the average person put that heavy starch on there, and when you come through, <laughs> and he put that heavy ass starch on there, and then your boots would shine. You know, it, it probably looked a little bit more presentable. Now, you know, when you went to ACUs, I mean, ACUs, I mean, shit, you take one knee, you got to stain for life. Like, <laughs> you know, like literally, like, you, you take a knee. Like, if you go to the range and you shoot, I mean, even if you just went there and did your 40 rounds, oh, your, your uniform is done. Yeah. And it almost came to the point where you have a range uniform and you have a yeah. comparison uniform because that's just what it is. Now, BDUs, I promise you, I can throw a grenade in there right now, blow you up. You dead. But don't be the use. They're going to be standing tall like, hey, the next person come on in. It's just like, um, it's like Dickies. Dickie's yeah. got a permanent crease. I don't care how many times you wash it, that crease is going to be there. And that's just yeah. how BDUs were. Like, it just, it just made more, I mean, I guess it was more expensive because you had to stitch stuff. And, you know, I understand why they went to the Velcro, but then Velcro was coming off. So Yeah, yeah it is. And, and they still got the same issues with the uniforms, man. Velcro falling apart, you know. Um, <laughs> me, I, you know, I go and get everything stitched on just so I uh, – I don't yes, have to worry about to, that. Yeah. But see, at yeah. first, they didn't, have, they didn't allow that at first, remember? Right. Yeah, I remember. So, I mean, like I said, I still work with soldiers, and I'm telling you, you know, it's the funniest It's the funniest thing on the other side of things. And you, was, mm -hmm. I guess you got a couple more years, but once you, if you choose to be around soldiers, whatever, you know, your next, you know, job, whatever, and I just be sitting there, I be looking at soldiers, I be like, I'd be like, damn, he is a dirtbag. I'd be sitting there like, he'd just be like, oh. or if they, if they say something, you'd be like, damn, that was a dirtbag statement. I was just like, this and then you start, to, I start thinking like, shit, did I say shit like that? You know, or, you know, you just start saying like, damn, maybe I was fucked up. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it's so funny, man. Like, it's a, it's a blessing to still work with green suitors and, you know, still support the force and stuff like that. And, and it's just funny, man. It's just hilarious. Like, just yeah. the amount of respect. And it, I just be thinking, like, man, if you'd have caught me in the military, you'd have shitted on me. But now, <laughs> I got people saying, oh, hey, oh, I'm telling you, man, when I was a contractor, um, and I was working, and I, I worked for a, a Fulbright colonel, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I ain't never talked to no colonel just on a daily basis, not in the Army. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, here, I'm like, oh, I work with this dude. Like, I see this dude every day. Like, I go in his office and be like, what's up, sir? Blah, blah, blah. 
he just thought, how you doing today, sir? And he like, he treats me with so much respect. I'd be like, damn, man, you would have shit on me about three, like three months ago. <laughs> <laughs> like, and it's, and, I mean, I didn't have Lieutenant Colonels come to my office and be like, hey, man, hey, 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 hey Mr. Turner, man, uh, uh, do you think you can help me? I'd be like, shit, I don't know, man. I, you know, I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> come on, man, if you, just, if you could just, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'd just be like, I'd be like, I feel like uh, he man. I got the power of bricks. I'd be like, I have the power. Because <laughs> I'd just be like, I'd be like, oh, and I just, and sometimes I'd be an asshole just because I got the power and the authority to do it. And I'd be like, this is for all them days I got yelled at by somebody that I was, I was like, today's my day now. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'd be shitting on people. I'd be like, nah, I'm not gonna be able to do that. Oh, come on, sir. Nah, I'm probably nah. It's not looking good. Like, send me an email, and then I can see it. <laughs> so yeah, that's one of the things, man. You'll get to uh, enjoy when you uh, take off your suit, man. Yeah, I see I, Brian. I'm looking forward to it, man. You know, Brian or Reed. Uh, right. I gotta stop calling him Reed. I gotta forget you saw Brian because right, we work together. Like, I still saw him. Reed. And you still saw him Turner. Hey, <laughs> it's funny because I'm telling you, I'll be sitting there and I'll be like, Hey, Reed. And I'll be like, hmm, that was all right. I'll be like, and I'll like, they, people be like, what are you talking about? I'll be like, Reed. They be like, you mean Brian? Oh, yeah, fuck, yeah, Brian. I'll be like, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Brian, he still has that, it, it, like, that NCO, like, you know, mentality still. So right. he still got that confrontation in him, you know what I'm saying? Right. He's very, he, yeah, he'll throw a knife hand. He'd be like, hey, man, what's up with that knife hand, though? That shit is aggressive. <laughs> like, he don't think it's aggressive. I'll be like, bro, you can't what? go around doing Hold that. Hold up here, hero. <laughs> <laughs> I, and then, so we was like, we was debating on that, whether or not that's aggressive. He don't think it's aggressive, but I'm like, bro, that's just aggressive. When somebody done that to you, it was because they was upset with you. Nobody's yeah. ever got a friendly knife hand. Like, first of all, the word knife is not friendly. Yeah, that's like, true. Pretty you know, aggressive. Yeah, so <laughs> Pretty aggressive. It's aggressive as hell. And it's just, it just be funny, man. We just be at work cracking up and stuff. So, but yeah. But yeah, like I said, man, it was good talking to you, man. We're definitely going to get you back on the show because uh, we want to hear some more of your stories. I'm sure you got a lot of stories. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, I, I got them all you. in my bag, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I want to check on you a couple months and be like, hey, what's the, what's the, what's the haps in, uh, in Korea, did you go any more blue uh, signs? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Blue, you know, my my wife's signs. always posting uh, all our travels all over social media and whatnot. So right. definitely, uh, you know, get some good memories and whatnot and, and be able to share the stories for people out there that, you know, want to do some traveling maybe up here in Korea, uh, Germany, wherever, man. You know, I think it's yeah. a... It's a great thing what you guys are out there doing, you know, out there trying to you know, bring a piece of the world to some people who may not ever get to go out and see it for themselves, you know. Uh, so I definitely think it's a blessing what you guys are doing. It's great. Thank you all for having me. Uh, and I definitely look forward to it. All right. Anytime y'all need me, I'm here, man. Hey, I, I, I can swap my backdrop out too. Next time I'm gonna put some uh, put some put some Korea up on there for yeah, you, whatever you want. You know, my green screen. <laughs> I hear that. Hey, did you get the PS5? Oh, no, no, you an Xbox dude. I'm an Xbox dude, man. Good. But I, I don't plan on buying. Uh, the, the I, you know, so normally, even though I'm a, I, I prefer Xbox, I usually still buy both consoles because. Uh, there's some titles I like on one that come out don't come out on the other. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, I never buy the first generation of the consoles when they come out. Let, I, let know, it wait. I give, yeah, I give it a year, two years, and they're going to come out with the new advanced one that uh, don't have this bug or don't heat up or don't get this. Uh, so I usually yeah, just Yeah, because they've been having a lot of issues lately. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I see yeah, it already. People done. posting issues that they're having with them, you know, power issues already. I'm like, you said, I told you. Just yeah, wait I'm, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait it out. Wait it <laughs> out. No. I say, you give it a year, two years, you get them consoles, the, the upgraded versions, you know. Exactly. Don't have all the issues, man. Yeah, so. get, get the bugs worked out. Exactly. Exactly. But um, that was amazing. This is my first time meeting you, man. And hey, I, I really enjoyed the conversation. Like, I know if we haven't met in person, you seem like the one of the coolest, most laid back dude. And I got the old school saying, like, yo, you, you cool with my homeboy press and you cool with me. Hey, yeah, you know, I, same thing. Same here, Ryan. It's a pleasure meeting you, brother. Hey, where you say you was at again? You up in Atlanta? Oh, no, no. I'm in, um, I'm in Maryland. I, I, I'm like, okay. I, yeah, okay. I'm, okay. I'm, 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 yeah, all away from Preston. 
Okay, I thought you said you was in Atlanta. I was. Gonna, oh, I got well, family out there in Atlanta. Yeah. So. Well, well, I mean, my, I, you know, I'm, I'm a military brat myself, so uh, I'm, I've been living in Maryland for the longest, but I, I, I claim South Carolina, Spartanburg, Spartanburg, South Carolina okay. as my hometown. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. ain't nothing wrong with that, baby. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, definitely. Hey, pleasure meeting you guys, man. Like I said, anytime y'all want to do it, Preston, you got my info. Pleasure meeting you, Ryan. Y'all hit me up, all right, man. All right, all right appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. All right.